All right, 2021. I had a goal of reading 24 books. Nope, I failed. I read uh, 19, no, actually 18 and a half. This is the half. This is Dan Brown. Uh, I'll leave this for the last ones and I'll just go through all the books that I've uh, read. Uh, but before, I uh, would like to share how I uh, started reading uh, or getting more interested about reading. It was uh, in about uh, age 16. I figured that uh, I had to read more books and uh, I made this decision to read at least one page a day but every day and that's how it started mm, yes one of the first books that i read was uh robert kiyosaki's uh rich dad poor dad which i remember and uh yes i went off from there so so far i have read uh, about 144 books there's a picture not all of them are there but uh some I have uh, given away, some I have lent to somebody and they haven't given them back to me yet, and some I've lost. And I also lost one book that I read this year. And uh, yeah, all right, hope you enjoy. You get some uh, good suggestions for your reading uh, next year or years to come. Uh, anyways, I'll start. So uh, I'll start with these, and uh, uh, I figured out a new way how to uh, save money on books uh, if you have a book that you like you just type in the name in a google or DuckDuckGo search and uh, add pdf for example this book is called limitless you would write limitless pdf and then i uh, print it on uh, four pages per uh, one sheet and uh, it's big enough so you can uh, see it and you can read it and there's also a place to make notes so uh, that's how I, I've been doing it lately so uh, <clears throat> the books that you get don't cost like 5, 10 or 20 euros but you can get one book for around 1 euro so that's a good deal all right so I'll go through the 18 books that I read this year and uh, I'll put them in two stacks uh, of uh, the books that I would suggest reading and books I wouldn't suggest reading. Uh, I'll start with a book that I lost. It was uh, the first book that I read this year uh, in January. I suggested a China study to one of my friends, uh, Davis, and he suggested uh, this book to me to read this. It's from uh, Umberto Eco and it's called uh, Focult's Pendulum. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I'm not sure. I read it in Latvian. Um, it was about uh, this uh, publishing agency that uh, were looking for uh, great good stories uh, to publish and um, they uh, found this um, sort of a brotherhood or um, like illuminati or something like that and they were trying to infiltrate and see what they're doing in their uh, meetings and uh, yes it was a long story about basically the life uh, of, uh, of a writer and uh, about this uh, brotherhood of people who uh, had these secret meetings and uh, yes uh, I would not suggest reading it so it goes uh, here all right uh, next book is uh, Limitless this is uh, I really like the, the, the name of it it's uh, by Jim Quick and it's a self-help book it just has uh, a lot of uh, good ideas on a uh, what to do with your time. Um, all right, uh, I'll open chapter nine. I usually write down the things that I like uh, in the back or, uh, or on the front of the book. And uh, it says a morning routine. <clears throat> I like these uh, morning routine things. Uh, one of the books that uh, I learned a lot from was uh, Miracle Morning. It uh, gave a lot of uh, good ideas on how to uh, implement good habits in your morning all right this is it small simple steps right, let's see where the where the suggestions for the habits are all right here it is i think 
All right. So it's a cold shower. That's a good one. Uh, breathing exercises. That's good. 20 minute meditation. Okay. It says uh, journaling. Yep. And you do three things uh, of work and three things that you want to do personally for your personal life. And you, I guess you write them down and half an hour of reading. Uh, so those are pretty good habits uh, to do every morning. And that's one of the things that uh, I took from this book, which is, uh, which is good. I would suggest reading this. Uh, the next book is uh, The Compound Effect. <coughs> um, I'm not sure if it says here, but uh, Albert Einstein said that the compound effect could be the eighth uh, miracle of the world. Or the eighth wonder of the world. Um, Alright, I haven't uh, taken many notes here. Uh, I've written about democratic schools here. Oh, and this book ends with a... Uh, with assignments uh, where you uh, basically assess your life, you assess your core values, you assess gratitude, what you're thankful for. And uh, I really like that, that, that this book has some uh, writing part as well, where you can actually go through the things that uh, they were talking about in the book, so you can uh, make some notes and uh, yes, this is really good. Uh, I would suggest reading uh, The Compound Effect as well. It's by Darren Hardy. All right. Then this one was uh, suggested to me by uh, Ellen Zopp from Estonia. Cheers. Thank you. This is uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. I had read a couple of books from uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, like Think and Grow Rich and uh, Law of Success. Good books. And this one here uh, basically talks about... Um, your own inner dialogue that uh, sometimes you are your uh, you yourself are the biggest obstacle in your way of uh, succeeding or doing something good because uh, you have these thoughts like ah don't don't push yourself it's too hard you shouldn't be doing this or it's too scary or, it's too, it's too dangerous we don't know what's gonna happen and uh, uh, I think yeah those those were the main things okay I have a uh, Taken down uh, three pages. I'm gonna quickly uh, uh, check what the, what they say. It's 49, 163, and 211. Let's see. Uh, let's sound 49. I have for many years followed the habit of taking personal inventory of myself once a year, for a purpose of determining how many of my weaknesses I have bridged or eliminated and to ascertain what progress, if any, I have made during the year. And this is a really a good good thing to do, because most people just uh, keep on going and whatever, whatever happens. All right, I have a big, uh, big exclamation mark here. Uh, okay, so 163. Okay, let's see what it says here. First, let me be correct. The old saying that all marriages are made in heaven. I know of some which are made on my side of the fence. Minds which do not harmonize should never be forced to remain together in marriage or any other relationship. Friction and all forms of discord between minds lead inevitably inevitably to the habit of drifting and of course to the indefiniteness all right so th i remember now that this is a conversation with the devil that he's uh, also like having and this is how he describes it and the devil gives him suggestions or uh, just answers his questions all right and 211 let's see what that is all right this is uh taken maybe a bit too long but human relationship may be made to yield riches in their highest form riches in material mental and spiritual estates 
All right, so this is a mind, body, and soul, something that I uh, really like and I like to search for in books. It's this connection that you take care of your body, then you can take care of your mind, and with that, you can take care of your soul. And uh, this is also a book that I would uh, suggest reading. Uh, all right, Liver Gallbladder Flush, also just me, suggested to me by Ellen Tsop. And uh, yes, page 54 and 86 are uh, the two that I've uh, written down. And uh, I'll just try and see one of them. It says milk and bones. All right, even if, if the body receives more than enough calcium foods or food supplements, a shortage of bile would render much of the ingested calcium useless for bone building and other important metabolic processes. In addition, the presence of gallstones in the liver raises the level of harmful acids in the blood, some of which are neutralized by calcium leached from the bones and teeth. Something similar happens when a person drinks cow's milk. To neutralize the high phosphorus concentration of ingested milk the body uses not only the milk calcium, but also calcium from the bones and teeth. Eventually, the body's calcium reserves become depleted, diminishing bone density or bone mass. This may lead to bone and hip fractures and even death, with more than half of women over age of 50 already affected by osteoporosis, albeit only in industrialized nations, it is obvious that the current approach of taking hormones or calcium supplements is a shot in the dark. It in no way addresses the imbalance in the liver and gallbladder caused by reduced bile output due to gallstones. Uh, this is also a very good book if you're interested in uh, your digestion system and uh, how it works and uh, especially how to get rid of uh, gallbladder stones and liver stones. And uh, yes, this also correlates with a book that I read a, a couple of years ago and also suggested to my friend, uh, The Great China Study, which is uh, also a good book to read. Also in the books that I would suggest reading. And this one is a committee of 300. Um, so everything in this book was pretty much shocking. I can just uh, remember one thing uh, that uh, I would like to share also in the su suggested books. Um, is that uh, like, the, uh, and we're talking about the US, uh, United States government, uh, so that uh, they had uh, observed that uh, one of the most uh, um, lucrative businesses in the world is uh, the drug business or uh, illegal substances, uh, if you may. And uh, selling them, distributing them gives a lot of income. So the government understanding this uh, does not want to give this power, this uh, money uh, to a cartel, to mafia, or uh, criminal organizations so they uh, take this upon themselves to be the the drug distributors and drug sellers uh, so that they would have this uh, income and they could use it for um, like different black budget things uh, very good book written by uh, um, Dr. John Coleman, I think he was uh, uh, a Navy SEAL at some point and then became a doctor or something like that. You can you can look into that. It's a good book. All right, next one, the Happiness Hypotheses uh, by Jonathan Hay. Let's see if I have uh, written something down. doesn't seem so all right okay so I'll just uh, try to remember 
uh, what it was about. I think uh, he had uh, done a lot of research in what uh, makes people happy and he uh, he just uh, approached it uh, from a biological standpoint and um, and yeah it's just uh, one of the books that was I think it was uh, it had a hard language maybe and uh, wasn't that the, the most fun to read uh, so to say but uh, yeah I guess if you're interested in uh, in some research and uh, he had some uh, good uh, good quotes in there and uh, yes yeah, some some good uh, research papers that he uh, linked this back to so uh, good thing to read our life is the creation of our mind that's from Buddha. All right. So this would be something that uh, I'm not sure of. You can read it. I would, I would, can't not suggest reading it, and I cannot suggest reading it. So it goes in the middle. All right. This is a uh, one thousand uh, not explained phenomena, and uh, it's just uh, a bunch of uh, things that had happened like crop circles or uh, submarines disappearing, ships disappearing, ghost stories, um, the Loch Ness Monster, and all kinds of uh, things that uh, still cannot be explained, like UFOs or whatever they're called now. Uh, yes, and it's just like different descriptions and uh, stories from people who have observed these things and uh, I would say I, I do not suggest reading this all right this is from uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky it's called the eternal husband and other stories this as it is uh, like uh, translated from Russian and it's uh, written a long time ago uh, it had a lot of words in English that I uh, had not seen before so I did uh, a lot of uh, underlining and translating uh, like cur which is a dog aspic knee jelly balank mange milk jelly uh, all kinds of galosh I think that's uh, waterproof overshoe all right that's from russian yeah uh, the russian people know what it is and latvians as well probably yes uh, this is something that also i can decide if you want uh, you, you can read it uh, it wasn't uh, the best read or the fastest read but uh, yes it was it was all right all right this one right here it's uh herman hesse uh, the game of glass marbles. I hope it's the name in English, but uh, in Latvian, it's 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 what it's called in Latvian, basically. And uh, it was a story about uh, like these uh, these uh, also this sort of a brotherhood that lives secluded from uh, the rest of the world and that their means of expression uh, expressing math science um, arts is all through this this game of these glass marbles at no point they actually describe playing this game but somehow th they describe everything through this game um, it was an interesting uh, story um, it was one of the slowest reads that I've ever had. It uh, took me a while to read this. It's uh, like a small print and uh, lots of pages. Um, let's see. I have written down something. Uh, okay, I've uh, noted two errors. So uh, if you're the publishing company, I think this is published from Diana. You have two mistakes in the book, so you can uh, reach me if you want. I can... Uh, show you what needs to be fixed 
and then uh, I read page 17 had something about uh, something about uh, Okay, this was about, uh, I think, eating flesh and something about of, uh, the secret societies that uh, I've been uh, very interested in uh, for the past couple of years. And uh, yes, uh, a good case that you can uh, study right now uh, was uh, Jelaine Maxwell's case, which uh, just ended and she's guilty. And uh, hooray for that. Uh, this is a book that uh, I... I can also neither uh, suggest or not suggest, so you can uh, decide for yourself. Goes in the middle. All right, Stephen Covey, uh, start with the most important thing. I think might be the the English uh, name for this. Oh no, it's called First Things First. That's the yes, that's the name in uh, English for this book. And this is also sort of a self-help book, which has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, good suggestions on how to uh, get better at uh, what you're already doing or what you would like to get better at doing. Mm. Okay, this uh, also has a suggestion like uh, this is one of the first books that I showed that said journaling that you write down uh, your day's plan or yesterday what you did or uh, just random thoughts that you have. And this actually has uh, some suggestions on what exactly you need to write if you're keeping a daily uh, journal. And it also has uh, these uh, MBS, Mind, Body and Soul Needs, page 62. Uh, I just want to see if it's not too lengthy. Okay, it just uh, talks about uh, physical needs that you have, social needs that you have, intellectual needs that you have, and... Uh, uh, needs for your soul I hope, I hope it makes sense all right i'm not gonna go much into detail but this is uh, uh these are the type of books that i like and uh, stephen covey has a really good book called seven habits of highly successful people that i can suggest reading and uh, i would suggest read that and uh, if you like it a lot then read this book as well but this for this year it goes in the middle so you can decide yourself then uh, Richard Dawkins, The Selfish Gene. Um, all right, this was, uh, this was a nice read. Uh, it, he had a lot of, uh, he has done a lot of research in this. And uh, yes, it, it, was a, it was a good book. Also a hard read, uh, for me at least. Um, yes, one of the things that I remember Okay, I have uh, written down one thing as well. Uh, page 63. <clears throat> okay, what about interspecific contests? As we saw earlier, members of different species are less direct competitors than members of the same species. For this reason, we should expect fewer disputes between them over resource and or our expectation is born out for instance robins defend territories against other robins but not against great tits yes one can draw a map of the territories of different individual robins in a wood and one can superimpose a map of territories of individual great tits the territories of the two species overlap in an entirely indiscriminate way. They might as well be on different planets. Okay, so uh, yes, it just talks about robins, that they would uh, defend their territory from other robins, but they would not pay attention to any like this other species of birds. Uh, there's... <laughs> and yes, this... Uh, the species of birds is called great tits, I guess, uh, which is uh, a good name. There's also uh, one bird species that is uh, called uh, blue 
Footed Booby. That's from uh, Southwestern books, kids books that uh, I've also read. That uh, Those I suggest uh, reading to your kids. It's a good read. All right. Next book is uh, Chicken Soup or the Soul. Uh, this is a good book. Also, one of my uh, previous colleagues, so to say, is a... Uh, is, uh, one of the authors in this uh, book, if you can call like this colleague, he had worked for the same company that I had, uh, which is Southwestern Advantage, a long time ago. But I guess well, might not be a colleague anymore. Um, all right. So I've written down some ideas here, but this is um, this is also one of those uh, self help books. It has uh, one hundred and one uh, inspirational stories. Uh, from real people that uh, they've gone through uh, there was a lot of uh, like uh, cancer survival stories and uh, how they dealt with it uh, uh, w w some of the hardest stories also uh, I've read from here I uh, like uh, parents whose uh, kids get cancer and uh, how they get through this uh, it's a, an emotional book and uh, also a good good book to read uh, this uh, this would go into books that I would suggest reading. So, and I just noticed that I've dropped one of the books. Uh, all right, uh, this is, yeah, also one, one of the books that I read this year is uh, Born to Run, which is a great book if you like running. This year, I think I've ran 2,400 kilometers and uh, yes you can follow me on Strava if you want uh, all right uh, 39 the drink so uh, it's about this uh, uh, tribe that lives in uh, Mexico like in the mountains there and uh, they had a they have a, spe a special drink that they drink that uh, uh, some say that is the, uh, one of the keys on, on why they are such good runners. Uh, they drink uh, chia seeds with uh, lime juice and water, a mixture of that, and uh, yes, that g gives them a, a lot of strength. Um, chia seeds have lots of uh, omega fatty acids and uh, different uh, good nutrients uh, that might, might, might be one of the things also, there's some uh, food suggestions here. There are some great stories about ultra running, uh, just mindset, uh, training, and what you need to wear. Uh, there were these uh, guys who ran barefoot. Uh, some of the tribes people there ran just with uh, some, uh, a really thin sole. Um, yes, so it's a good book for, for runners, definitely. Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. Uh, in suggested books all right this is from uh, Marish Sveduk which is a, a Latvian bodybuilder uh, I met him uh, recently as well he uh, I think yes he actually signed the book for me which was great and uh, it's a, a story of how in uh, 2001 he won the show of uh, Robinsons, where uh, people from uh, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania were competing against each other uh, through surviving, through different challenges and living on an island. And uh, yes, it's a, it's a great story, a uh, great uh, viewpoint from a perspective of one of the contenders in the series. And you can uh, read a lot of things that you uh, did not see in the uh, TV show if you watched it. And uh, yes, a good read. And uh, if you're interested in it, then I guess this is a, uh, a book that I would suggest reading. All right, next one is Ikigai. Which is basically... Uh, stories from i want to slaughter this i think it was 
uh, Japan. Yes, we don't want to mess that up. It's um, an ikigai means uh, a happiness in being always in action or always having to do something. Uh, and you just find happiness in everyday life. And then there's uh, some, uh, I think it's called Tai Chi, maybe, some, uh, some movements. Also, one of the, one of the, some yoga moves, yoga poses. I think it also had uh, yes, this one right here. It's uh, called Greed the Sun, uh, or Downward Spacing Dog, uh, or, yes. Uh, it uh, talks about breathing and talks about uh, why some people have lived longer than others and it's basically living uh, a stress-free life and uh, let's see if I have okay I have uh, written down a lot page 51 basically says uh, don't eat meat because it gives a lot of stress to your uh, uh, digestion system uh, one Page 142 basically has a list of what to eat and what not to eat. 146 also goes through the mind, body and soul concept. Uh, 150 has the yoga poses. And uh, okay, 158 has not Tai Chi, but Tsigun it's called uh, for curing TB, which is a tuberculosis, which is cool. All right, I'll just uh, quickly uh, go to the page which talks about what to eat and not to eat. 142 let's see how how much is there okay uh, okay I guess this is uh, something that you should eat so it's uh, vegetables um, fish that have uh, the fatty uh, the good fatty acids in them uh, vegetables, um, nuts, berries, uh, legumes, olive oil, and red wine. Uh, but very small amount. Don't go crazy, okay? I know it's New Year's. All right. Yes, uh, this is this is a good book. It's basically like uh, secrets from Japan on how to live longer. Suggested uh, reading. All right, this is a cool fella called Uldis Pilans. He's a, a very successful uh, entrepreneur from Latvia. And yes, let's see if I have written down something. Okay, I have. Uh... Okay, he also talks about mind, body, and uh, spirit or soul. It's in pages 48 and 352 but the two other lists uh, are in 221 and 289 okay so if you want to teach about wealth and well-being for your kids uh, there's something for that then there's also a checklist if you're an entrepreneur on what you should think about for your company on how uh, your company can succeed and get better uh, that's 221 okay I'll just uh, try and see what it uh, some wealth suggestions for kids 289 maybe it's something useful that uh, you can use ah okay okay so uh, this there was a chart here which basically uh, talks about uh, uh, illusions and reality on uh, like uh, you would think that uh, if your family is wealthier, your kids would uh, be better taught or have better grades or uh, be better behaved. But uh, so if you have more money, so it will work that way. But it's actually like this sort of a, this sort of a line here that there's a, a certain point where too much money is actually bad for, uh, for the kids. So they need to be exposed for uh, some amount of wealth, but not too much. So, uh, all right. This is uh, also a good book to read. Uh, I, I like the, I like the, the man himself as well. So, good book to read. Okay. Uh, 
All right, and then uh, two more to go. And that's it. Edward Snowden. Yes, so... Uh, all right, I don't even have to go into uh, much of this, but if you know who he is, you know what, what the deal is here. Basically, there's two guys, him and Julian Assange, uh, that are uh, hiding or being uh, pr prosecuted by their country uh, for exposing uh, the government lies and the government co corruption. And uh, yes, so it just shows you in what type of uh, civilization or world that we live in if uh, people who are telling the truth are being uh, hunted and uh, just uh, it's, it's crazy and uh, one of the things that I remember from this I also said it in uh, one podcast is that uh, when you accept cookies it couldn't be farther from uh, cookies what you're giving away you're giving away all your private information, all your access to your phone, to your data. And uh, they're using this data to sell it to who, whomever wants to buy it. For example, if you have written down that you would like to get like a new Christmas present uh, for your uh, siblings, which is uh, a trampoline, they would use this information to sell it to some uh, trampoline manufacturers so that they could... Uh, target you with their ads and this is uh and this is just a small portion portion of uh, uh of of things that they sell uh, about you and uh, yes this is also uh, a book that i would suggest to read and this last book that i did not uh, manage to finish book 19 so i failed in my task to read 24 books this year last year i read uh 17 and then a year before i led, read 11 and that was the first year when i started taking notes on how many i read but yes the total now is about 144 that i uh, consider being books because i've read a lot of, i've read a lot of pamphlets and uh, educational uh, materials uh, some uh, i've read some diploma papers uh, i've also read uh, some uh, guidebooks that are like uh, uh, user's guides like but uh, i i have not uh, put them in uh, into this list because uh, i don't consider those being real books but angels and demons this also talks about uh, illuminati uh, i really like dan brown because he uh, everything that's in his books uh, besides the story itself are real facts uh, uh, real historical uh, events that he refers to, uh, real artworks, real places, real churches and uh, monuments. And uh, he says here that the, there is such a brotherhood called Illuminati. It's real. Uh, that you don't know about it or you think that it's conspiracy theory, it's, it's up to you. It doesn't matter. But... Uh, you have to take time to look into it and understand how it works in order to uh, to make uh, a fully educated judgment about uh, a subject, so to say. And uh, I believe that uh, in one of his previous books uh, called Inferno, uh, which was written in 2013, he predicted uh, what's going to happen in 2020 and 2021 while people are not focused on uh, what's going on behind the scenes they're just focusing on what's being broadcasted in television or uh, the fear-mongering that's uh, being uh, mm, being uh, yes just uh, pushed forward by the by the media and uh, yes, uh, that's it. Hope you liked it. Hope you can get some good ideas for your next year's uh, reading list. Uh, hope you got some uh, new ideas as well from it. Just two books that I don't suggest. A uh, couple of books that I would uh, uh, figure out yourself if you want to read them. And uh, yes, so 
just uh, quickly again for the books that I suggest reading are Angels and Demons, uh, Permanent Record by Edward Snowden, uh, My Entrepreneur's Code by Old Spielance, Ikigai, uh, so Living in Malaysia and How to Survive on an uh, Island and How to Win the Show by Mar Shvedux, then uh, Chicken Soup for Soul by a lot of people, Born to Run from Christopher McDougall, Committee of 300 by Dr. Coleman, John Coleman, Gallbladder Flush by Andrew Mortis, uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, and Limitless by Jim Quick. Cheers, have a great next year, and see you later. Peace from West to East.